Our universe is the stage for truly impressive and fascinating scenery, but also for plenty of brutally extreme phenomena. Cosmic rays are a good example of these. They are extremely energetic particles which arrive to Earth from distant parts of our galaxy and beyond. Upon reaching the Earth's atmosphere, they may create the distinct particle showers they are famous for. But just how energetic are these particles? Pro tennis players like Roger Federer can serve at whopping speeds reaching 230 km per hour. Ultra-high energy cosmic rays, the most energetic, are single particles with energy similar to that of the tennis ball, which is made up of trillions of particles. The question now is very clear. What could be at the origin of the production of particles with these energies? Certainly there must be an intense astrophysical process going on, so why not consider the most extreme of astrophysical objects, the black hole? The question remains though, what is a black hole? The modern theory of gravity is called general relativity, and it rests on Einstein's field equations, according to which gravity is a manifestation of the bending of space and time in the presence of matter, or as John Wheeler said it, space-time tells matter how to move, matter tells space-time how to bend. A black hole is just a solution to these equations which corresponds to an incredibly dense object, producing a gravitational field that is strong enough to trap everything inside it. Not even light can come out. The surface beyond which light and all other things are trapped is called the event horizon and is a general feature of black holes. Many black hole solutions exist in the literature, so which one should we use? Most things in our universe are spinning and we don't expect black holes to escape this rule, so we should use the solution which describes a rotating black hole. That turns out to be the Kerr solution to the equations of general relativity. The Kerr metric tells us how space and time bend around the spinning black hole. Luckily, we don't need to look at this expression and instead we focus on its implications. The important thing about the Kerr black hole is that besides the event horizon, we also have a second surface, the ergosphere. The region between them is called the ergo region and it has the very important property that particles there can have negative energies. This gave Roger Penrose the idea for the Penrose process. Consider a particle falling into the black hole and breaking up at the ergo region into two resulting particles. Since we are in the ergo region, it could be that one of those particles has negative energy. The other, by energy conservation, has positive energy greater than that of the original particle. But where did this extra energy come from? The negative energy particle must fall into the black hole, reducing its rotational energy, so we conclude that it was extracted from the black hole itself. Very shortly after being published by Penrose, it was suggested that this process could be at the origin of the production of high-energy jets of particles. However, further studies showed that this was very unlikely from the astrophysical point of view. This does not mean we must completely abandon the idea of energy extraction from black holes, we must simply consider a different variant of the process. One such example is the radiative Penrose process. To understand it, first consider a magnetic field in flat space. If a charged particle is moving there, it will experience the Lorentz force, which causes its trajectory to be curved, as well as the radiation reaction force, which represents the particle's energy loss due to radiating photons. Next, consider the case where we have a magnetic field around the rotating black hole and take a charged particle moving in its vicinity. When it's approaching, it will be losing energy by radiating positive energy photons, but when it gets inside the ergo region, it could start radiating negative energy photons. In that case, the particle would gain energy and be accelerated by the radiation reaction force. Could this radiative Penrose process be at the origin of the production of high energy cosmic rays? If not, could it be some other mechanism of energy extraction from black holes? If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe.